Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy Roper and I am your host for today. Um, today we're going to be discussing how to find balance in our lives and particularly focus on new mums and how new mums can help navigate that early motherhood phase. And to help me do that, I am talking with Sarah Noble, who is the founder of Mindfully You. Sarah is a mindset, mindset and mindfulness speaker, writer and mentor, and accredited mindfulness teacher. She specializes in helping first-time moms optimize their mental health so they can navigate motherhood with confidence and clarity. She does this through one-on-one mentoring, moms and bubs workshops, speaking at and hosting events, and much, much more. She's also a mom to Dylan, who is 10 months old and is extremely passionate about normalizing the conversation around mental health. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast today. No worries. Thank you very much for having me, Amy. Okay, so I thought we'll go straight into it. Mm -hmm. I've introduced you, but I thought it's always best to describe yourself and show your passion. So what, how would you say what you did if somebody came up to you in the street and asked you? Sure. Well, I mean, obviously that what you read out is kind of like, you know, what you would put, for example, online, just, you know, short and sweet for people to, an idea. Um, you'd kind of elaborate a bit more if you meet people in person. But essentially what I do stems from my own journey. So um, these things I focus on and that I help my clients with are all things that I have struggled with personally um, and I'm super passionate about that um, so the umbrella I guess is mental health um, everyday mental health um, focusing on first-time mums because I was focusing on it before my son but then I realized there was a huge gap in mental and emotional support for new mums particularly first-time mums um, when I had my son because there is such a huge shift. It's such an incredibly massive change physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, and it's very overwhelming. Um, and yeah, they're just, there's not a lot of information out there. There's not a lot of support out there. Um, and many women don't know where to go for that support. So that's where I sort of come in. Um, my aim, my big, huge aim is to reduce the suicide rate, rate in New Zealand. Um, improve New Zealanders' mental health and prevent as many women as possible from getting postnatal depression and postnatal anxiety. So I'm kind of in the preventative. I'm, you know, in, um, in the middle and, you know, looking at your everyday mental health and what you can do to reduce your stress to, um, you know, help you find balance, to help with overwhelm and, and things like that. And I obviously do that through a few different ways, one-on-one um, -on -one mentoring, um, mums and buds coffee groups so kind of like your antenatal class but a lot more obviously chilled and relaxed um, and we focus on a specific topic that you are struggling with so for example that might be stress um, and obviously you know you can be in your friend's home and you can have your little babies there so it's nice and relaxed um, I also um, speak at events I just spoke at the Dunedin baby show which was amazing um, post my own events and I'd give a lot of uh, free um, tools and tips and perspectives on my social media as well. And I also share my own personal motherhood journey very openly and honestly, because I think it's important to, um, to kind of share my ups and downs and struggles as well. So people can see, you know, what it's like and they can see what I'm struggling with and how I deal with it. Mm. Um, because I totally believe that that helps people as well. And the key there is so people mums know that they're not alone they know that yeah. you know these feelings are normal um every mum goes through it because i personally think motherhood is um you just have no idea until you're in it it's not it's not talked about enough so i want to you know be part of that change and normalizing talking about honest open motherhood and and everyday mental health because we all deal with it we all deal with our mental health every day yeah yeah i could go on but i'll that's stop that's <laughs> so important yes yeah. uh yeah you can you can tell that you're passionate about it and it is so important i mean what you said about sharing your own story and mm -hmm. the expectations because there yeah. are so many 
motherhood books and baby yes. books and new parent Expert. books and expert <laughs> books and yeah. then you've got the perfect celebrity moms on instagram and the pressure's huge and i suppose from what i get from what you said after having the baby you're kind of blindsided by mm. reality mm. and how how do you kind of coach women to overcome that or prepare for that yeah i mean <clears throat> I, you, there's totally things that you could do to prepare for it but the thing is you just cannot fathom what it's really like until mm -hmm. you're in it obviously if you had some tools there in place you can jump in and start using them straight away you know like mindfulness or um you know stress reduction tools um you know belly breathing and things like that so there's certainly things that you could put in place and you could make sure that your um communication pathways are extremely wide open with your partner um because there's there there is so many things there's change in family dynamics there's um going from independent woman in control of quite a lot of things to you know housebound 24 7 in those early days with a human on you that you have to keep alive um that you probably don't really know what you're doing um you know sleep deprivation um you're still healing physically and you're obviously still hormones are kind of all over the place um so you're quite emotional um you may have a village you may not you know and like you say there's the comparison and there's the judgment and there's the tv programs the movies the social media highlight reels um and stories that we've seen that don't kind of match up with the actual reality of motherhood mm -hmm. um so and, and for some reason like i know lots of people that have had kids you know but i was still blindsided i still had no idea you know what it was really like um and that's why i want to be part of opening up and, and having these honest conversations so women aren't so blindsided when they um have their baby and they understand that what they're going through is normal they think a lot of women look at other women and think you're not struggling you're handling it fine you know I, i'm failing i'm failing as a mum. you know why why can't i do this or well their baby's sleeping through the night so why isn't mine what's wrong with my baby you know and what we're forgetting is that um every single baby is different every single person is different we all have different triggers we all re react differently different situations um and that's obviously why you know some women will handle um particular aspects of motherhood really well and some women will struggle with those you know we're all different and we just cannot appear in that respect but also i think sometimes we we judge because for example we might see a mum right who looks like she hasn't even given birth and she's dressed to the nines and you're sitting there in your baggy like baggy t-shirt with milk stains on it and your back pants that you haven't washed for two weeks and your hair you haven't washed for three weeks you know and you're like wow obviously she cares more about her appearance than her baby but mental health is invisible you you don't know what's going on in her head you don't know what's, what her family's like you don't know what her baby's like you don't know what her mental health's like it may be her way of making herself feel good being dressed up Mm. you know so we just cannot judge and we cannot assume other one other mothers have it all together because we all struggle with something but not everyone chooses to show it right like yeah. social media you know you choose what you put on there you choose what you want to say and most people choose to put the highlights um because let's face it nobody wants to read a debbie downer all the time right <laughs> no. um then it's kind of having that other effect of people thinking that know they're feeling less than they're feeling like a failure as a mum. um they're berating themselves and beating themselves up for struggling because it appears that everyone else isn't struggling and then add in all the noise from experts the books you know all the sleep consultants all the people saying eat you know give your baby this food and um sleeping through the night is one of the ones that really really gets to me um and it's particularly difficult for me because I have insomnia um, right. and I struggle with anxiety personally and then get in a, a baby that wakes you know anywhere from two to six times a night still at 10 months which is normal mums 
um, can be very hard, right? And then you have that pressure because everyone always asks, is he sleeping through? You know, that's just like, is he a good baby? You know, yeah. questions like that. And it's, that doesn't help. It's like, no, he's already smoking and drinking, you know, like, <laughs> come on, he's a baby. Baby's wait. That's, he's just a baby. He's not even a year old yet. You know, it's completely normal. There shouldn't be this pressure on mums um, for the baby to sleep through. And if the mum is already fragile with her mental health, it could tip her over the edge, having that added pressure from all mm. this noise because she Absolutely. thinks that there's something wrong with her parenting or something wrong with her baby. You know, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's taken me a while to get my head around that one. <laughs> yeah. And then you have people throwing on the self-care talk. And you've got yeah. to find time to look after yourself and self-care and all that self-love. And then you think, well, how can I look after myself when I'm only just looking after my baby and she's doing it differently and she's doing it differently. Mm. And I suppose it's remembering that everyone has their own way of coping, like you said, with the woman who gets dressed up because it might help her self-appearance and self well, it might help her mental health, it, right? Her like mental that, health, yeah, yeah that's, that's the word. Makes her feel good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the word. I'm like, God. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what sort of tips could you give to women who are suffering with either, like, mum guilt or comparisons? What sort of tips could yeah. you give them to help them know that it's okay other than just saying it's okay for it all mm -hmm. to be shit? Yeah. Um, number one is being extremely discerning and mindful of what you consume and who you follow. The movies, the magazines, the TV programs, the books, social media. Okay. Do not read, listen, podcasts, whatever, you know, everything. Do not read, listen, Take in anything that doesn't feel aligned to you, that doesn't feel right, that doesn't sit right with you, that makes you feel like shit. Mm. You have a choice of what you consume. You choose what TV program you watch. You choose to buy a magazine. You choose who you follow on social media. So choose to follow people that lift you up, inspire you, that motivate you, that make you feel good. It, basically, positivity. So, you know, unfollow people that make you feel less than unfollow people that make you feel um, like a failure as a mum, make you feel jealous, that make you feel negative, that make you feel down, that, um, you know, because we're kind of torturing ourselves in that respect because we're the ones with the choice there on, on what we consume. So yeah, that's super key is just being aware of the, the um, all the information from all the different avenues that you're consuming. If you read a book about, you know, from a sleep consultant and it doesn't feel right to you, you don't have to take that on. You don't have to follow that, you know, schedule and that rule, those rules. Um, so it's about, you know, figuring out what feels right for you as an individual mum with your individual baby, because there's no one like you on this earth and there's no one like your baby and nobody knows your baby better than you. So with all this noise, we're forgetting to listen to our intuition. We're forgetting to listen to our mama instinct. Um, all this other stuff is kind of overriding it. So it's huge. They're like massive. Um, and I think just also looking at your mindset and really understanding that, you know, catch yourself when you're, when you do compare, because we're humans, we will, but it's about, you know, what you do with that. It's about how you react to that. When you, you know, if you're aware of it, then you can kind of catch yourself and say, you know, what am I comparing here? You know, am I having a bit of a crappy day? So, you know, I'm feeling a bit sensitive or you know um so choosing how you look at things um and you know choosing to give people the benefit of the doubt oh she's really dressed up you know instead of thinking she doesn't care about a baby she only cares about her appearance think well you know put on her doing something that makes her feel good you know try and reframe um those things that are making you fear or um or judge or feel less than yeah, those are probably the top two that I would I would go with. And there's obviously, yeah, there's a bunch, but we'll keep it short. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've just scribbled that down. 
So I just want to recap. So listen to your internal compass and your yeah. mama instincts. I like that. Mama instincts, your mama intuition, instinct. your gut. Yeah, you listen to your gut. If something doesn't align, even if they're an expert, if it doesn't align with you, trust yeah. your instinct, instincts because you know your you baby know more than anyone. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you're the it's expert true. here. You are the expert of yourself and your baby. Yeah, nobody nobody else. knows you like you do. No. Nobody knows your baby like you do. Nobody no. has that bond. Not no. even the father. Yeah. That's really oh, important cool. to know. Yeah. And then I like the being mindful and being aware of when you react and how you react mm -hmm. and why yeah. why you could be doing what's it. actually that's, triggering that's really you, you know? yeah yeah D digging into what's actually you know what's triggering you is it is it you know just using the same example is it because you really want to look nice and you like dressing up but you haven't done that you know so maybe maybe it's about finding time to do that maybe instead of putting on the track pants you put on those you know really nice shiny jeans mm -hmm. um maybe that's why you're conflicted with that one maybe that's why you're judging you know yeah. actually instead of you know we often ignore our feelings or we mask them with food or you know shopping or whatever um i know for mums new mums often online shopping is a big thing yeah. um luckily i never had the money to do that <laughs> <laughs> but um you know instead of doing that instead of masking or ignoring Face them head on and be like, what's going on here? And it's just like, it's just like if you have a sickness, you know, instead of like, I've got a sore throat, you know, instead of um, taking a pill, which will mask the symptoms, what's the cause of that sore throat? The same with the feelings and the thoughts and the emotions. What's the cause of this? What's actually at the core of this? And then you can address it and you can heal it and you can move on and you can feel better. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Now, it led me on to something else, which I wrote down. And I just wanted to try and find it. So when you see women, do you see them one-on-one -on -one just in Dunedin? Or do you work with people like we're talking now on Zoom? Do you work with people yeah, online? Yeah, online as well. Um, so I was actually originally in Auckland. Um, oh, okay. And funny enough, clients I had weren't in Auckland so that was all online um and then so it's basically in person wherever I happen to live or online yeah so there's you know it could be anywhere it doesn't have to even be in New Zealand um and sometimes you know my clients even if they're local we still sometimes do video it just depends on what they're up to and what the kids are up to yeah and how does how is the process of booking an appointment and that kind of first consultation, when do people tend to find you or make that first appointment with you? What stage are they generally at? They're, they're sick of their own shit. Um, you know, those repeated patterns of um, thought patterns that just aren't feeling right, but they just, you know, like they're stressed, they're overwhelmed, they're frustrated, um, you know, with, perhaps their mindsets or their level of stress or their ability to, um, you know, balance things and manage things. Um, they might be unsure of who they really are. So I, I do talk, um, there's a few key topics that I speak about, like stress management is one, understanding your thoughts, feelings and emotions instead of masking them or ignoring them. Authenticity. So particularly with that, obviously the transition to motherhood, a lot of women can, you know, kind of, who am I now? And, you know, you, you don't really ever go back to your old life um, because that's, you know, that's not a thing anymore. Like things have changed. So um, those are just a few of the topics that I focus on and yeah, they're kind of just at a point where they're stuck. Like they know they want to do something. They know they don't want to feel like this. They know that they want to be stressed and they want to, you know, love themselves more and, and figure out who they are and that person 24 um, seven. They don't want to feel so overwhelmed and they, you know, want the head, in a critic, the you know voice in the head to be a friend, to be a nice place to be. Um, they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it. They just they don't know where to start. Um, and they just need some help and support. And you know, working with someone like myself, um, the thing is is that we often don't know the questions to ask ourselves. We don't know 
how to dig deep and peel those layers back and find out the cause of stress or of, you know, why you're scared to be yourself, for example. Um, so yeah, that's where someone like I come in. Um, and so the few ways people have reached out to me, um, word of mouth or, um, you know, even through, um, online networking or, um, you know, groups, mums groups and different groups where people are saying, you know, Hey, I would like to learn about mindfulness or, Hey, I'm struggling with this. And I'll just say, you know, this is what I do. Happy to help. Um, and I offer a, obviously my social media as well. Um, and then the events that I do hmm. and speaking. Um, so I offer a free, I call it a mindful connection call. Um, nice. I don't like the, I don't, I don't like the whole strategy call thing. Like it just seems too yeah. corporate to me. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just like not all about corporate. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we have a free chat because it's important. Um, this is big work, you know, and it's not easy to change your mindsets. It's not easy to improve your mental health. It's not a quick fix. It's not a pill. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And so with that, you know, you need commitment. You need um, support. You need, you know, the drive to do it. You need to be in a place where, you know, really ready to do some work. And you know that that work can be hard. That work could be difficult. That you might face some emotions and some demons might come up. Um, obviously that's where I hold space for, you know, that person and support them. Um, so yeah, we, we have that initial call. So then both parties need to feel comfortable. I need to know that, you know, I can help them with particular, you know, where they're at in their journey. For example, I don't, you know, I'm not a psychologist. I don't help people that have been diagnosed, you know, with severe depression and things like that. You know, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, you know, I'm in the preventative, I'm in the everyday mental health. Um, so if someone has been diagnosed with postnatal anxiety, postnatal depression, you know, and they're really struggling, um, then that's when I would refer them to, you know, like a psychologist or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not what I do. Um, and yeah, so just, you know, ascertaining that where they're at in the journey, um, and if they're ready to commit, because I can't create results for people if they're not willing to do the work. And then they also need to make sure that I'm the right person for them, that we have a connection, that we align, um, that they feel safe and that they feel comfortable to open up to me because you will need to open up and, and you know, and face some emotions and some thoughts. It might be scary. Yeah, yeah. It, it is very scary because mums... I know women in general, it always seems to be like women can do it all. I know we talk about men's mental health and that's something different, but mm -hmm. women are always seen as kind of the pillar heads, the matriarch, the person who holds the family together and A lot of pressure. Who, who holds them together. Exactly. And that's where exactly. you come in, which is really, really, yeah. really yeah. helpful. And also, you know, empowering women to, to speak about how they're feeling and, you know, and ask for help mm. because part of that problem, particularly for mothers is that they, you know, they're like, well, my mum had six kids and no help, you know, and she managed. So I'll just have to struggle through this because, you know, she didn't ask for help. Yeah. Um, and that person on the internet that I don't know, looks like they're handling things and I've got like four kids and I've only got one, you know, so I'll just, you know, I wanted kids. I'm just going to have to deal with this. And that kind of mindset is it's not helpful. That's it's adding to your stress and overwhelm. So it's knowing that, that you know, breaking, breaking that, because it's just like saying, um, you know, stuff that's in our society today, like, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're a man and you cry, you're weak. You know, these outdated bullshit mm. messages um, that are affecting males' mental health. And so that's one affects females and it's time to just get rid of that and not believe it anymore and be the change and support each other as mums and ask for help everybody struggles with something sometime and personally i would rather ask for help and be vulnerable than struggle alone because that that's a slippery slope you could yeah. end up in a place where things are dire and all for the sake of, you know, reaching out and asking for help. 
and obviously in the early days you know with women that I speak with it could be as simple as just talking to your partner and saying look I'm really struggling with this can you you know can you help out with this or um asking your mum-in-law or your mum or you know someone to just um look after baby even if it's for an hour just so you can get that self-care in um to get that alone time get your body to yourself you know mm. and go for a walk or something um because you need that change in scenery because you're often in the house um you know alone most of the day and it's hard you know day after day so you know asking for support just for those little things can make a huge difference let alone the big thing yeah 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 i mean it seems like the dysfunction is more with society than with the person oh, yeah. Mm. And yeah absolutely yeah because that's what people, we said yeah. from a young age you know appearance said that the appearance said that um yeah. you know and i you know as a collective now we're starting to kind of change those generational patterns um you, know, you don't have to parent the way that your parents did. it doesn't make them bad parents or wrong it just means that they parented the way they you know with this uh, support and the the knowledge you know that they had at that time and you're doing exactly the same so yeah. there is no failing everyone is always doing their best and they're doing their best with resources you know the mental health that they have the support that they have you know at that time so you know who knows like if, you know when i have another child um i, I could be in even even a place and in, and in a better place mentally um and so it might look slightly different for that child you know so it's just it's about what's best for you and again going back to those instincts and and um you know, intuition and just forgetting about what everyone else is doing i know that's easier said than done but start start and <laughs> yeah and build up you know yeah so you can only start um right so that was actually all the questions i had you've covered we've covered a lot Wait. in such a short <laughs> time but i just wanted to check is there anything that i have missed that i um, have asked i guess we we didn't specifically talk about once like heaps i mean there's obviously little tidbits there but maybe a little note on that like that's with community no... finding community would be a good one yeah you need tips um, on that so i'll talk about balance first yep, yeah um yeah. no such thing as perfect it's not a thing so knowing that balance will, it will change you know so we're all on the seesaw and we're trying to kind of have it you know as steady as possible but that could look different on different days on different weeks on different years different people um but it's about identifying what's not working for you and then you, you then you can kind of get more balance so a lot of it you know particularly with mums could be overwhelmed because there's all these things and so that's when you need to quieten the noise that's when you need to stop going on social media stop reading the book stop reading the magazine stop watching those tv programs um stop listening to those well-meaning friends or whatever it is um so you know that's a start um and it's an individual thing you know for you and also for your family so um balance is going to look different and it's yeah it's going to be different depending on different days because we all have different levels of mental health each day sometimes we just wake up and we're grumpy for like no reason other days with you know we're sweet ass and um, so it could be as simple as breaking it down and being super present and just checking in with yourself each morning um knowing you know a lot of us myself included struggle with um very high expectations of ourselves and not wanting to fail um but key message here you cannot fail as a mum if you're doing your best there's always enough and also reframing how you look at failure so that's really helped me failure isn't a negative thing failure is a lesson there is always a lesson in the failure and it could be learning more be more patient um and a key example is looking at look at your child your child is so 100 percent present in the moment we're always thinking about the past um or anxious about the future we're not living in the present moment right 
Um, and you just have to look at your child who, you know, when they're learning to crawl, when they're learning to stand up, when they're learning to eat, they give up the first time that they fail, that they fall over, you know, no, they keep yeah. going until they fit. So failure is not a bad thing at all. The reframing how you look at that. Um, yeah, balance is going to look different for, for everyone. Um, and it's also about looking at your values and what you are prioritizing, because sometimes you are prioritizing things that aren't actually in alignment with you. So you might be prioritizing coffee, which is a big one for mums. It's not working for you. It's making you anxious. It's, you know, it's stopping you from sleeping at night, which is odd when you're a mum, you know, you try and get as much sleep as you can. <laughs> <laughs> um so you know it could be things like that, that you know you need to just kind of admit yourself and be like right i'm reducing that coffee or i'm eliminating it um so there's a number of things that, that can help with balance um and you touched on community so i guess touching on the village right community mm. support we don't have a village anymore yeah. um and, you know, back in the day, we, we would have just literally been with baby and just tended to baby's needs. But what happens now is you're pressured to go back to work, which means a lot of mums um, stop breastfeeding and because um, they have to go back to work and, and obviously, you know, affect their mental health um, and make them feel guilty, for example. You know, so there's things like that, the pressure to go back to work and, you know, the, dealing with leaving their child which you, as you can imagine can, can affect your mental health majorly um yeah it's just this pressure and we are so connected 24 7 with the internet but we're lonelier than ever because it's not proper connections it's not in-person connections and i'll be the first to admit that um community and village is something that's been hard for me because i don't have one um so my partner is english and his whole family are in england um, my parents are in Australia. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And we moved to, um, Dunedin in June when Dylan was six months old and I knew one person, but she lives north of Dunedin and works four days a week and has her own kid. And then her partner has another three kids. So I don't really get to see her. So essentially I don't have a village. It's just me and Dan, my mum and dad might come over once or twice a year. Um, mm -hmm we get you know we might try and squeeze in a date night then but you know and it's hard and so you have online um, communities and things like that um, again you've got to be very careful of those they can either be extremely positive or extremely negative um, so and, and it's also totally different in person um, so that's a huge thing that new mums in particular have to deal with is is that and um not everyone you know has the luxury of having a village there and that can really you know be really tough and really affect your mental health um so i guess it's also about giving women tools to deal with that as well um and to maybe even you know have ways of finding a bit of a tribe a bit of a village for them i had like i had this thought the other day that i thought would be amazing it would be like a, a an app Kind of like Tinder, right? But for mums, so like you would put your, you know, profile picture or whatever. You'd put, you know, how many kids you have, what ages they are, where you are, yeah. what you're into, and then you could, you know, you could just be like, hey, I'm in this place as well. My kids are a similar age. I'm into the same stuff. Do you want to meet for a coffee? <laughs> Swipe right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, just hang, and just meet up with people. And if you click, sweet. If you don't, on to the next person. You know, like how cool would that be? Um, that would be so you good. know it's also about kind of getting out there a little bit as well and going to the um different groups and things and um you know and meeting people and and um obviously it, it can be hard when you're a bit older and when you have kids you can't you know you're not going to school every day right and and hanging out with people and getting to know them so it can take a lot longer so there needs to be a little bit of patience there mm -hmm. um so that's something that's still you know happening for me um and you know it's about finding ways to I guess deal with that as well um, if you if you're struggling with that so yeah that's definitely a huge huge issue in today's society yeah so I suppose you're doing that as well with the mums and bobs workshops and coffee groups so you're helping to foster that community hmm. where you are yeah absolutely yeah yeah it is so isolating hmm. so yeah. isolating extremely yeah 
Um, yes, yeah. so we covered a lot. Despite me missing completely the topic, balance. So thank you for bringing <laughs> that back up. No worries. I kind of lost it amongst all the... the yeah, we, we, we were talking awe. about some juicy stuff, you know. Oh, some so. juicy stuff. I was sitting here <laughs> going, wow. So kind of summarizing that whole however long we were talking for into one kind of succinct sentence or paragraph, what is one thing that you would like the women listening to this to take away from today's talk? It's, it's hard to put it, it into like one thing, but I guess, um, you know, just to know that you're not alone, it's okay to struggle. Um, it's okay to ask for help. In fact, it's incredibly strong to ask for help. It is not weak at all. It, is, it shows massive strength. Being vulnerable is uncomfortable. So, so strong. Um, yeah, you're not alone, you know, and I don't know, just that there is support out there. You don't, you don't have to do it alone either. Um, and, you know, you got this. You're an amazing mum. <laughs> Fantastic. I think that summarised it quite well. Thank you very much, Sarah, for joining me today for the Women's Wellness Podcast. Um, no problem. Yeah, I'll invite you back. I have other ideas buzzing around my head for different Sweet. topics. So we yep. will talk more in the future. <laughs> awesome. Thank Sounds you. good. Bye. Thank you. Bye.